let's get into the, uh, the main part of today. Um, our first speaker, sorry, Mayor, have I missed something up? No, I'm just going to get Pauline. Okay. okay, good. Our first speaker is uh, Dr. Pauline Bennett uh, from Monash University. You, probably many of you are aware of Pauline. Um, Pauline is in the uh, School of Psychology and uh, uh, Psychiatry. Um, Pauline has also established the uh, Anthrozoology Research Group here at Monash and uh, Pauline is an important member of the Animal Welfare Science Centre. Pauline's had a long-standing interest in human-animal interactions, particularly uh, human companion animal interactions, uh, and her interests are in some of the aspects that uh, result in a dysfunction in that relationship. And uh, that's what Pauline's going to talk about today in terms of dogs. Thank you, Pauline. Thank you. Can you hear me? Is that working okay? Cool. Thank you, and thank you very, very much for coming. I've never had this many people come to help me socialise my puppies, and I really appreciate that. If you haven't met them yet, this is Annabelle and Velvet down the front, and they just came along for the day because it's too good an opportunity not to. Um, and I especially appreciate the people who have come in from interstate, so I feel privileged to be able to talk to you about something about I, I feel really strongly about, which is dogs and dog welfare and, and how we can make it better. So what I want to talk about is why behaviour is as important as confirmation when we're selecting breeding dogs, and I'll put at least there because I really think behaviour is way more important than confirmation, but that's my bias. I'm a behavioural scientist and that's just me. Okay, so first of all, let's begin with by just acknowledging how amazing dogs are. They are the most amazing species on earth, I think. Um, they figured out thousands of years ago that cooperating with humans, no matter how embarrassing that might be, is a really good survival strategy. It's much better than competing with us, because we could have competed and we may have lost, but instead of that we threw our lots in together. And you know, living with humans can be pretty embarrassing for a dog. <laughs> we, we do really weird stuff to them a lot. But they hang in there and they do everything we want them to do. And for dogs, that's been a really good evolutionary strategy. So a lot of our larger mammals are disappearing off the planet really fast. Not the case with dogs. They're exploding in population. They're everywhere. We take them to every country we've inhabited. So instead of their range being narrowed, our big animals all over the world are dying because we're taking their range. Dogs are just going everywhere we go. They're, they're, they're on every planet, every village, every town you go to. They enjoy a range of goods and services that we provide, including assisted reproduction. So we actually spend a lot of our time and money and resources looking after our dogs. I certainly do, and I, I know a lot of people in this room do. I put a lot of effort and a lot of time, and a lot of my money goes towards dog stuff. You know, doggy acupuncture and doggy physio and, and reproductive and, and bringing sperm in from overseas and you know, trying to find the perfect male and all that kind of stuff. It costs me a lot of money and a lot of time, and it's really good fun. I really like doing that, but the dogs benefit from that. And sometimes they don't appear to give very much in return. Now, often they do, but sometimes I look at my dogs and they seem to have it pretty good, you know? They just sort of veg around the place and, and I look after them. I go out to work and earn money to pay for them, their food and their, their resources, and, and I'm happy to do that. So, you know, who's the stupid one here? So there have been some people who have said, well, dogs are social parasites. We really don't need them. They're using us up. It's a bad thing, right? This is a little bird called the European cuckoo or the common cuckoo and this is the classic case of what a social parasite is. This is a bird that doesn't like to do the work of being a bird so it doesn't like to build a nest, it doesn't like to look after its baby birds, oh, it's too much hard work, right? So what it does when it wants to have a family is it goes around and it finds a nest with eggs in it and it tips them out while mum's out foraging and it kicks out the eggs that are in the nest, puts its own eggs in the nest and then it goes off and does whatever a cuckoo does and leaves the other bird to bring up its babies for it, right? And this is a picture of a tiny little bird called a reed warbler feeding a cuckoo and you, can, you can't see it, but that's the nest sitting under. And the nest is like this big and the baby cuckoo is this big and this poor little reed warbler is spending its entire life feeding someone else's babies. And I do sometimes wonder about that with my dogs. <laughs> When I'm sitting up all night bottle feeding a litter of puppies while mum's asleep, I'm thinking, oh, I don't know about this. No, sometimes they do seem to have us pretty well worked out. If you've ever had a barbecue with your dogs, you know, you're feeding them pretty much, and they do get pretty well looked after. Right? 
So are they social parasites? I think not. I don't think that for a minute. I think I get way better, more benefits out of my dogs than they ever get out of me. I love having my dogs. They make my life worthwhile. It's really good fun. And that's true. We know that that's true for nearly everybody. We know that dogs are good for people now. And my research and a lot of other people around the world have done a lot of research looking at what a dog's good for. And they're really good for people. We get lots of benefits. Physical benefits for a start. They help us exercise more. We... Um, have better recovery following a heart attack if you have a dog in your house. Um, lots and lots of physical benefits from having dogs around. Doesn't work for everybody, right? <laughs> but most of us get more exercise because we've got a dog. Same with psychological benefits, n enormous psychological benefits. We are less stressed when we have dogs around, less depressed, le less anxious. That can be really important for us in this crazy world that we live in. Again, doesn't work for everybody. Sometimes dogs cause you a little bit of stress. Right? If you've ever opened your door and seen a futon stripped, you, it's, it's hysterical. I did that once and it was just very funny. Okay? And also we get social benefits. So dogs bring us together. Right? You're all together today talking to each other because of dogs. You go to shows every week. You go to obedience, trials, agility because of your dogs. You get together. That's true of normal people walking around the road. If you go for a walk through a park with a dog, people stop to talk to you. If you go for a walk through a park with nothing, they don't. Right? So they're very good at bringing people together. Again, doesn't work for everybody. No? And I do have one friend who has a dog who doesn't like her bringing male visitors to her house and has had some fairly nasty incidences with that, but we won't go there. Normally dogs are good at bringing people together. We get all these benefits. So why is that? Why do we get these benefits from dogs? That's a question that's really had me thinking for a long time now. Is it how they look? Yes, I think that counts. Right? So they do have this aesthetic appeal. We like to look at them. These are two of my dogs, Timmy and Annabelle, who's over here, and I really like to look at them. I can sit for hours and watch puppies <coughs> and dogs. I just like to look at them. Certainly that's the case for people who are buying puppies. These are two of my puppies. Um, same mum, same dad, bought, born 10 minutes apart. I've got 20 people who want to buy. Which one do you reckon? Blue Merle, blue eyes. I just have a list of people ring me up. They want a blue Merle with blue eyes. Black one, beautiful puppy, gave him away to a friend. Right? Has lived happily ever after, simply because he's black. No, that's, that's a human thing. We're a little bit silly like that. We do have dogs that reflect our status or our imagined status, so we have dogs that we like to look at. <laughs> you know? and, we, and we know that. So we do, ha it, it's the kind of dogs that we have is often not an accident. We choose them because we like the way they look, we like the way they are. That gets us into trouble sometimes because we really like weird. Right? So we like dogs that are different from everyone else's dog. If everyone else has got a black dog, I'm going to have the blonde one. Right? And we know that. A guy called Ray Coppinger did an experiment. This is not Ray Coppinger. This is just a photo I pulled off the web. But he went into a park with a box of puppies, and they were Labrador puppies, and either he had in the box, you know, 10 golden Labradors and one black one, or he had 10 black ones and one goldie. And sure enough, everybody he asked, which puppy would you pick, picked the odd one out. Right, so if all the puppies were black, everyone wanted the blonde one. If all the puppies were blonde, everyone wanted the black one. That's something about human psychology, that we like things that are a little bit different, and that's got us into a little bit of trouble with our breeding because we've pushed it to, to the limit. And we'll, other people are going to talk about that today. That's not what I'm going to talk about. How they feel is also important. Running your hands through a dog is a really nice thing to do if they're uh, washed and clean. And it's just you know really good to cuddle a dog. Sit on the couch and snuggle up with a little fluffy dog is really good feeling. And we use that in animal assisted therapy now all the time. So we use that tactile contact with dogs to help people. How they smell puppy breath. For those of you who have never smelt puppy breath, if you could bottle it, you would. It's just amazing. Dogs don't always smell good. This is one of mine who just hangs out in water troughs. You know, not so good. But when she's clean, she's good to cuddle. Right? How they behave is the critical thing. People love dogs because of how they behave. They do whatever we want them to do. Right? If you want to go skateboarding with a dog, it will. You're never going to get a horse to go skateboarding with you, but a dog will do that. If you want to just get down and get dirty and have fun, your dog will be in it with you. We really like the fact that they'll be in stuff. Even if you just want to sit around and drink coffee, this is a photo of my house, and it says something, I think, that the dogs are on the couch and the guy's on the ground. <laughs> That's pretty normal in our house, but a dog will just be with you, whatever you want to do. And if I'm at home working on my computer, I've got 100 acres and the dogs can run all they want. They're in my office under the desk. 
because that's where dogs like to be. Wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, I'd rather do that. <laughs>